But Lord, we just come before you tonight, God, and we thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that you've been helping to speak as a work of God, who I pray your wisdom and truth will come forth tonight. In Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen. Does anybody know where we're at? Sixteen, Proverbs sixteen, verse. It's either eight or nine. Yeah. I don't know. Sister Bonnie needs some cheats. Fifteen, verse eight. Fifteen, verse eight. Sixteen, sorry. Sixteen. 16, verse 8. Chapter 16 in Proverbs, verse 8. 16. says, Better is a little. Everybody in America would argue right here, right now. Better is a little. Better is a little when you can have a lot. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. And uh, see, God's not telling you that great revenues is wrong, but He is telling you that without being right, it is. And He's saying you'll be much better off just having a little and having righteousness than having a lot with no righteousness. Because either you're going to live right or you're not. Better is a little with righteousness than great income with injustice. And, you know, Unfortunately, in my life, there were some seasons when I made great income through great injustices. And I had no peace. <coughs> no trust. Nothing. But, you know, some would look at me now and say, man, he's making the least he's ever made in his life, and he's the most happy that he's ever been. But God, I have something that most people don't have. I have righteousness. And the Bible says the righteous pr the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. So when I put my feet to, to use, when I put my, 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 my tongue to the Word of God and I start releasing the Word, something happens. And I have all that I ever had need of. And it may be little in people's eyes, but it's great in the eyes of God. Far better to be right and poor than to be wrong and rich. <laughs> You know what? If being rich solved all the world's problems, they would have been solved a long time ago. And if being as poor was as miserable as everybody made it out to be, nobody would have ever stayed there. I'm not saying that God wants you to be poor. He's not giving you a spirit of poverty. But I would rather, I would rather have a little bit and be right in the sight of God than have a lot and be on the wrong side of God. Better is a little with righteous and great revenues with injustice. Better is a little with righteous and great revenues with injustice. Better is a little with righteous and great revenues with injustice. It's better to have a little honestly earned than to have a large income dishonestly gained. And you know what? Throughout your life, I promise you, you've already been tempted and you'll be tempted some more. There's always something tempted, a way to make a quick buck, fast money. But fast money always has a big price. It'll cost more than you ever expected to pay. It'll take more than you ever expected to give. And it has zero dividends. But money that you've honestly earned, something it, it feels good. But guess what you also do with it? This is free. When you've honestly earned your money, you steward it. You're conscious of it. You just don't spend it lavishly on nothing. And so it, it's better to have a little honestly earned than to have a large income dishonestly gained. Because when it's dishonestly gained, you don't, you don't know what the price is yet. But you soon will. You all still with me? A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directs his steps. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord determines his steps. We plan the way we want to live, but only God makes us able to live. 
A man's heart devises way, but Jehovah directeth his steps. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes steps. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. If you want to, you, you can make all the plans you want in your heart, but they're never going to come to fruition until you start letting God order your steps. If you start making Him Lord of your life, and He tells you to step left, step right, and you can get so, I believe sometimes when we, uh, we first start following God, sometimes I got the picture of somebody in a clunky mud hole splashing through. Go, he's telling you to go left and go right. And God gave me a message many years ago. Some of you will remember it. But then I can imagine when you're, when you're first trying to go through a minefield, you want to set some off, you're really tenuously, you're nervous. Sweat's just pouring off of you. Am I going to make the wrong step? And he says, so you'll go left. And then he says, go right. And you're, you're following God. You're just nervous. But you can get to where the Bible says that, that following God, he shares his secrets with his friends. And he says he, you'll follow him with your eye. So just where his eye goes, you go. You know, instead of having like a bit in your mouth like a horse. So that same mind feeling, you can get so in tune with God, you're just dancing through the mind. And that's what it's like when God directs your steps. Your, your heart is trying to figure it out. But you get so in tune with God. that. And listen, I don't think anybody usually starts off dancing with him through the minefields, regardless of what they try to say. I think everyone is that first person, white knuckled it, going... <laughs> If I make one, do you realize what's right next to me, God? He said, yeah, go left. I think it looks better right. I said, go left. <laughs> but before long, you're, 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 you're good on it by faith, and you're exercising your faith. You're trusting God. You're trusting letting Him order your steps. You're trusting where He's going to take you. And before long, you're just dancing with Him through the minefield. You, you're not worried about those minds, even though they're still all around you, because you're trusting the one you're dancing with. You're trusting with the one that's leading you. Number 11. This one here really helped me many years ago. I really struggled in this area, and I'll elaborate on that a little bit. We didn't do 10. Oh my. I guess I'm really wanting to get to 11. A divine sentence in the lips of the king, his mouth transgress transgresseth not in judgment. God's verdict is on the lips of a king. His mouth should not give an unfair judgment. A good leader motivates, doesn't mislead, and doesn't explode. 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 Don't do that either. A divine sentence in the lips of the king. His mouth shall not transgress in judgment. And you know, the Bible says that all authority is given from God and of God. And you know what? He's telling them, listen, if you're, if you're up there and I put you up there, if you're in a place of leadership, then you should be honoring what I'm saying and everything you do should be fair and just. If not, I'm keeping record. And I should, if you're ever in authority, that should make you want to stand up and pay attention. An oracle is on the lips of a king. His mouth does not sin in judgment. Inspire judgments on the lips of the king. He shall not betray his mouth. The king begets divine authority. His decisions are always right. Which is meaning if you listen to the Holy Ghost, if you order his steps, you don't have to worry about it. God's going to give you a just thing. Amen? All right. Now 11. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. I remember the first time somebody quoted this to me. Well, I remember it wasn't just somebody. It was Pastor Billy. I said, what is he talking about now? Weights in the bag. I ain't no boxer. <laughs> he said, honest balances and scales of the words. All the weights in the bag are his concern. And he laughed at it. He said, you probably need to go home and study this. I said, you could have just told me. He said, I know. <laughs> God cares about honesty in the workplace. Your business is His business. And now, I came from a place in my life where nothing was fair, everything was rigged, and the last person you trusted was usually the ones in authority. That was the kind of lifestyle I came from. And I remember I was having to deal with some stuff that was left over from my past. Things that I didn't have anything wrong in a long time, but I was having to go to court for something, and it gave me this verse, and I'm like, What's that got to do with they ain't going to do nothing right anyways? They never have. He said, we're not the same person that you was years ago. I said, what's that got to do with it? He says, it's no longer rigged against you. I said, well, I'm from the show me state. 
And you know what? God has showed Himself strong in this every single time. It don't matter what they do. It don't matter if you used to deal with them before. If you were a king's kid walking in His authority, there no longer the deck is no longer stacked against you. If anything, it's stacked in your in your favor. Because God gives you favor, unmerited favor. And so I so I so enjoyed this little study here. A, a just balance of scales of Jehovah, all the weights of his bag are his work. A just balance scales of the Lord, all the weights in the bag are his work. Honest balance of scales are Yahweh's, all the weights in the bag are his work. And so they used to have these bags and they had all these stones that had marked on them, kind of like uh, one gram or two grams or half a pound or quarter pound, and they were all official. And so, and they would say, you want this much, and they would put it on the little lever, and they'd sell you that much. Except for all the shysters, they had different stones in different bags, and they'd say, do one that weighed the right, and they have another one out that was lighter, and they put it on there. And they would do those things. But God is promising you, it doesn't matter. When it comes judgment time, when it comes you dealing with things, you're going to get a fair shake, because I am king, and I rule over all. And you say, well, I've known some people that got a rough thing. I found a lot of people that didn't know who they were in Christ that never applied the authority that they had. And the enemy convinced them they didn't have, they, they, weren't, they weren't worthy because they didn't have the right to stand in that authority and they gave up the right. But God says His scales are even and His way is just. And so you have the right to, when you're dealing with things, you can stand and towards, no, your scales are even, your way is just. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what they're saying. I don't care. God said his scales are even, his way is just. And ever since in my life, no matter what circumstance I've been dealing with, God's scales have been even, his way has been just. It's not, and I don't care what people said, what was done, what was whatever. It's always worked out that way for me. And no, I'm no longer saying show me because he's already proven himself strong to me. And I had to repent. God said, you sure are a hard head. So he's talking. I don't have to show you nothing. Doubting Thomas. You know, and, and by the way, doubting Thomas wasn't so doubting as most people. God, God called him out on So go ahead and stick your fingers in the scars. And he said, I'm good. Yeah. He didn't stick it in like as, as a kid's story goes. He said, oh, I'm good. <laughs> Go look it up. <laughs> That's a lot of us are. We're all like, show me. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> the Lord wants weights and measures to be honest and every sale to be fair. That's what He wants for every area of your life. And it doesn't matter. Listen, the enemy's got plans. John 10.10, 10, he's going to keep doing his job until the end of time. The good news is that you've already overcome. God's already won. John 10.10 10 says, a thief come to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. That Zoe kind of life. And the God says, and when you're dealing with this chump, just remember that my weights and measures are honest and everything you do is going to be fair. And, you're, and I'm going to make sure. Does that mean that somebody's not going to try to rape you? No. Does that mean it's going to, not going to try to look unbalanced? No. But does that mean you, you need to stand in faith and believe that God is going to cause it to be fair? Now, I have heard people that went a little further. You know, how many know God, God's given us an unmerited favor? I'm blessed. How many know we are blessed and highly favored? But I, I have heard people believe not more on your Bear with me. They went on the extreme. They, they did. Their character was deficient. All their stuff was deficient. But they weren't. They, they weren't just trying to demand God to be fair. They were wanting God to rig it in their favor. Mm -hmm. Well, they hadn't done the work. Come on, are you with me? And how I many know? He's saying right here, I'm going to be fair. Period. Mm -hmm. For both sides, everybody involved, I want to be fair. And, and I've had to learn this myself. But once you learned it. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna go all in with you. My, he's gonna be fair. It's a great thing. And uh, so, and for me, it really started just dealing with governmental and places of authority that I knew. Like, you know what? So what if you can't trust them? You can trust God. You can trust His word. Amen. What time is it, Pastor Timmy? Oh, I got plenty of time. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness for the, for the throne is established by righteousness. He 
you know, all authority is of God and from God, but not everybody that's in authority acts like what they should. But that doesn't mean that God didn't intend for them to act a certain way. But we're going to see here how what He intended for every person in authority to act like. And guess what? If they're not acting that way, you don't have to be their uh, juror and execution, or God is going to deal with them. Whether you see it or not, because His scales are even and His way is just. Amen? You all with me? Wicked behavior is detestable to kings since a throne is established through righteousness. Good leaders abhor wrongdoings of any kind. Sound leadership has a moral foundation. How many know when your leadership needs to have a moral foundation based upon the Word of God? What is right and what is wrong? Not on what you, what you feed. Everybody today is on an emotional roller coaster. And you need to be based on the Word of God. It's the only thing that doesn't change. That was free. It's an abomination to kings to commit wickedness for the throne is established by righteousness. An abomination to the kings to do evil for the throne is established by righteousness. It's an abomination for kings to do wrong for the throne is established by righteousness. Kings cannot tolerate evil because justice is what makes a government strong. And you know what? We need to get back to this in America. We need to get back to this in our churches. We need to get back to this in our own lives because we need to not be able to tolerate evil. And justice is what makes a government strong. And when you find things weak, you can go and look and see where you can go right to Proverbs and say, this is where they're missing. This is where it's not lined up with the Word of God. Amen. Um, we're going to stop there for tonight. Sister Bonnie, I didn't even. I'd be Sean. Your business is his business. Your business is his business. Isn't that good news? Mm -hmm. Sister Rebecca. When you let God order your steps, all he has to do is guide you with his eyes. Amen. Good stuff. If you work on the speech, you start Yeah. I still, you know, and like those messages, I, I got to live them first. I still never forget that. If you can remember my big country self, imagine I'm, I'm, Lord's got me in my in my spirit. I literally saw me dancing with Jesus through minefields. And, and it was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. But I never forgot. He says, son, you can get so enthralled in dancing, having it, you know, with me, not talking all, all secular here, that you won't even be worried about where you're placing your feet. Yeah. Somebody else to Sister Deb. Amen. Amen. And listen, the enemy, you know, greed, he, he's been tempting Christians since the beginning of time. I'll give you this job and this and that and all that. I can't tell you how many times, even as a minister, that, you know, and even if it wasn't from him, it wasn't what God had for me. And someone said, well, we'll pay you this, Pastor Brian. We want you to come here and do this. Well, that's not my assignment. I've already got my assignment. Thank you. All my bills are paid. My kids are eating. i got vehicles to drive. And they let me take a vacation, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Somebody else tonight. Something you got. So Pastor Tim. Amen. And this is something God put in me a long time ago as part of who I am. I'm sure Pastor Jimmy would attest to that. Because everything I have comes from God. So everything I have is His. And when I, I, I feel like I have to give an account of what I've done with it, stewarding it, stewarding it, you know. And so when you look at things that way, it changes. You're like, well, because I remember still a young man that how much, didn't matter how much money I had, I still had nothing. I mean, I, I mean, I paid for things. I paid my house, cars, and all that off. But I, mean, I, 
I could blow more money in a weekend now than I could make in six months back then. You know, just gone. They, and it was mine. And someone say something, I'm like, you got a right to ask me. I work for that. I'll do what I want. Dumb as a box of rocks, I was. <laughs> but thankfully, I started studying the Word of God, and, you know, filled with the Holy Ghost, started applying some wisdom to my life. And now people go, how, how do you do so much with so little? And I said, oh, let me tell you about my, my, my God. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He's a good guy. Brother Ray. Uh, uh, he wants to scale to be fair. Either way. Yeah, either way. Yeah. And, and not and not only just that he wants, he does it. I'm going to have to hold it for that one now. Uh, he will. Because <laughs> uh, I got some, uh, and, and I believe uh, I believe it might be some inspiration. Uh, because uh, you know, I, I've been trying to spread up some of my past, you know, they are uh, yeah. crooked, you know. I mean, you know, I ain't saying I was no saint now. <laughs> like a lot of it, I deserve it. I'm good with all that, you know. But they, they charge me $50,000 that, uh, that I mean, was unjust, you know, or whatnot. So, uh, so I'm, I'm believing, uh, I'm believing in just straighten that out for us over. Because I, I called up her uh, last week, you know, and about to get back and forth. Just trying to take care of it, you know. And he's working in one pair. He's taking a lot of people. But, uh, <coughs> they, they kind of got natural again, and by the end of the conversation, she was, uh, she was very nice. And, uh, and I've been there, you know, and it's a, it's a good feeling to be a pastor, but I, I was just like that. Somebody said, and I, and I hadn't seen it. I could use it without God. I can tell you what it's like without God. Without God, they're going to take your money, skin you alive, and kick you on down the road because that's just how they are. And then they're waiting for the next one to come along. I was so happy that when I was with God that people had to treat me fair. And even if they didn't treat me fair, He was still working out in my favor and made it fair. And uh, and because I, I had to, it's made it so good because I, I had such a distrust for government, police officers, all these things. And see, if I was still that guy today, I couldn't be a very good pastor. How many know police officers and all the government people? They need a pastor that loves them, but doesn't doesn't see who they are. They see it sees their heart. Amen. And so I'm so glad. But it, that verse right there started me down that place so that I could view people differently many years ago. And so it's still a vital part of who I am. And I hold on. It, it's really dear to my heart. Um, leadership has a moral foundation. Amen. Moral foundation. <clears throat> Anybody else tonight? Anybody learn anything that's going to help you live your life a little better when you get out of here? Uh, one or two of you convinced me of it. There seems like he just let us out of here. <laughs> it's good to be home. Overcomers tomorrow night. You don't want to miss it. Good. So uh, we're starting to wind down our step two, aren't we, Pastor Tammy? We're starting to close in our step two. Yeah. And uh, I've got step three for us. So that was one thing God gave me when I was out there in the crazy traffic land of the East Coast. Just, just pick a spot. I'm not being. I didn't get down that far. If you, if you start at Niagara Falls and go to Maine and, and, and go steadily south to right before you get to DC, and you'll find. And I, I think we were in ten or eleven states. Eleven states. Yeah, went through there. Yeah, so. Anyways, we love you all. Thank you. Don't forget about the 10 year. Get you some stuff. Get busy. Uh, and I know you all have the Facebook invite because I personally invited you. <laughs>
<laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> I, I was going to be more unfair this time. Some of you go, I never got invited. I'm sitting there thinking, I know well, you did. <laughs> but sometimes technology goes away, so I don't, I'm awful careful. Which reminds me of a un, uh, has nothing spiritual to do, but uh, if you're looking for me to comment or like on something on Facebook right now, it won't happen. They've got me in some kind of jail. I don't know what it is. Uh, but I can still post. I can comment on my own post, but if I go and comment on anybody else's post, it says this post has been deleted or your permission has been removed to post on this and gives a little red flag. So if you're wondering why I haven't liked anything or talked to you, and some of you I know have been waiting, I felt in the spirit, I'm like, well, I can't say nothing, Lord. What do you want me to do? So I guess I'll just have to wait to say it. Pray for it. That's what I do anyways. So don't be offended. <laughs> if you are, you need to get it fixed. <laughs> Get off your emotional roller coaster. Get back on the faith train. Amen. I can tell you all it's so good, so miss me so much. Love you all. Blessings.